Well, folks, it's now officially autumn, and we're going to cook something a bit wholesome today. What are we doing, baby? Beef stew and dumplings. Beef stew and dumplings with mashed potato as well, folks. Come on, you're going to love this one. Right, so this is a one pot wonder really folks, although we're gonna be doing it in the slow cooker and the simple reason being is that we're using stewing steak and that can be a bit tough, can't it? Can be. So yeah. depending on what meat you use, you could even do this in the uh, air fryer, so it's not a problem, but um, you wanna keep it low and cook it for quite a period of time, hence we're gonna be using the, um, the slow cooker, which is a very low wattage item, folks, as you can see there. Our one's an old battered one, we could probably do with a new one actually, Sharon. We could do. It's been well used. And uh, all we're going to do literally is prepare the vegetables, but first of all, let's have a look and see what we got in this meal, baby. Here's the ingredients for our beef stew dumplings and mashed potato. Some stewing steak, we used about two pounds. Three carrots. One large onion. Two parsnips. One leek. Seven medium potatoes. A tin of baked beans. Some gravy granules. Maggie seasoning, salt and pepper, some dumpling mix and some self-raising flour. Right, so Sharon's chopped up all the veg. You ain't got to be too small, you can cut it smaller than that if you want. We just sliced the carrots and also roughly cubed the, um, what are they called? Onions. Onions. And we've also got the leek in here and the, is it a parsnip? Parsnips. And yeah. the parsnips. Now leeks can sometimes have a bit of grit in them, so we've just put them in the colander there and we're just going to rinse them under the tap. And once we do that, we're gonna carry on and make everything else come together. Yummy. Right, they've just been under the tap, folks, but as you can see, with the uh, leeks, they can get grit in them little... The ridges. In the little folds there, folks. So we just give them a little wash under the uh, tap and everything else there is really literally to be put into the Chuck pot. It all in. Right, so this is our old um, slow cooker, what we got. It's been well used. We could probably do with a new one, actually, baby. So let's just whack everything in. There's no oil in there or nothing, folks. So this we've is a not. Great dinner for the working woman. Yep. What about the working man? Well, the woman always does the dinner nine times. Well, I have been known, baby, to do the dinner. Oh, I haven't opened my beans. Right. So let's get the old tin opener. Get the old beans on, baby. You can put what you like in your stew. Yeah. It's we we literally had a look through the cupboard and through the fridge, and some people might not like a parsnip, baby. No. So you don't have to put a parsnip in. You could put other bits, you could put Brussels sprouts in there even. You, you, like. you could even put cabbage in there, folks. Yep. But we also like putting in a tin of beans, folks. It just adds a little bit more saucy flavour, baby, doesn't it? We love beans, don't we? Right, so this is our stewing steak, folks. It's actually still a little bit frozen. And as you can see, when it's a little bit frozen, it really does dice up a lot easier. So, you know, you haven't got to totally defrost it. But we're cutting it into smaller chunks because we're going to make it go further. It's got to do four people. And making it into smaller chunks means it's going to go further. Isn't that right, baby? Yeah. Just so you know, we've got this stewing steak from our local butchers because you know when you buy beef stewing steak from the supermarket, it's not big chunks. Right, so that's all cut up now, folks, as you can see. Now, again, depending on how many you're catering for, depends on how much meat you're gonna actually have in your uh, stew. We've got four people to cater for. And this is our pot there, as you can see. It's already been switched on, but you can see already that it's half full with just the veg alone. So now we're gonna put the meat in. And as you can see, that's a substantial amount of food we got in there. We like our food. <laughs> Right, so we're just gonna make up a little bit of extra gravy, folks. We use these gravy granules. They thicken up nicely. That's one of the reasons why we're using them. And that's Maggie. in with our Maggie seasoning. Now, we put loads of this in, as you well know. It really does give a savoury uh, flavour to your, any well, any meat dish, basically. And you can buy this on Amazon. You could put Worcestershire sauce in there, shall? Yep. But that's what we like. And again, put plenty of salt and pepper in, folks. This is cracked black pepper there, as you well know, and we're using Himalayan salt, pink salt. Actually mined from a sea, an ancient sea that evaporated years ago, Sharon, I don't know if you knew that. I think you have mentioned it before. <laughs> right, so as I say, that is actually switched on now. These are really low wattage items, folks, which are ideal 
in this energy crisis which we're living in. I know it's going to be on for about three to four hours, but um, as I say, it's a very low wattage item and it tenderizes your meat absolutely fantastically. Right, so there's that gravy mix there, folks. As you can see, it does thicken up really nicely as well. So we're just going to literally pour that gravy mix into our pot as well. And again, it's trial and error. Depending on how much you're cooking, depends on how much gravy you put in. You'll soon know, when you stir it round, you'll soon know whether it's moist enough, and if not, just add a bit more. And you've got the juices coming out of everything as well. Yeah, it will It will get a bit uh, more liquid in there when the um, vegetables release their, their liquid. So again, just stir it round, and you'll be checking this every now and again, shall yeah. won't they? And that is literally it, folks. You can put that on in the morning, before you go out, go shopping or whatever you do, and then come back and your dinner's nearly done. All you have to do about an hour beforehand is make your dumplings before it's ready. So that's it, literally, for the moment, for the next few hours, we're at a loose end. Well, I'm washing up. Well, I might help you do that. I'll have to, I'll do the drying as I normally do, Sharon. Well, and then I've got some washing to hang out like you do. I've got a bit of things to do outside on the car, actually. Well, off you go then, and I'll do it. Well, anyway. first of all, let's tell them what we're going to make here. Yeah, this is the dumpling mix. This is a Torah, which is a beef suet mix, yeah. isn't it? You can get a vegetable suet mix as well. It's called vegetable shortening, those of you who don't want to eat that. Well, if they're not going to eat, if they've got beef in that shell, beef suet, they won't be having a beef in a stew, will they? Well, they can have a corn stew. Yeah, I suppose you could even do it vegetarian. Yeah, that shut can. me up, baby, isn't it? Yeah. So during the four hours, folks, we may put a bit more liquid in there, we're not sure yet. And then at the end of it, when you've with just taste it if the meat's lovely and tender then obviously it's done because it will cook but you might taste it within an hour and you'll say oh yeah the meat's cooked but it'll be quite tough will it yeah let it go for longer probably three to four hours and that meat will change texture but make sure you just taste it and don't eat it otherwise you'll have no bleeding meat left in it sharon well yeah if you're about unbelievable right folks well here we go this is three and a half hours later now and as you can see all the extra liquid that come out of the veg, where the veg has shrunk down a bit. So we've not actually had to add any liquid at all into this. And shall? Well, yeah, let's see if this meat's ready. Right, there you go. You tell me if that's ready. Have a go at that and tell me if it's tender. That's tender. Yep, so three and a half hours. We've actually switched it off, folks, and it's still bubbling away. But uh, everything is actually done there. So what we're going to do now, is get the old mashed potato ready and Sharon is gonna prepare the dumplings and then we'll just drop them into that hot stew and they'll cook in that when we put the lid back on. So let's get on with that. Right, so just preparing the mash now, folks. And as you can see, Sharon cuts the uh, potatoes up quite small. Now there is a reason for that. Because it's gonna be mashed, it actually cooks the potatoes quicker. So you're actually saving energy. So all these little things add up to you saving energy. Just cut the potatoes nice and small and they will cook through quicker. Right, so we're making this now, folks, the uh, dumpling mix. And because we're doubling up, that's 100 grams of the Atora, which is the bed shredded beef suet. So 100 grams of that and 200 grams of that. 100 grams is four ounces, 200 grams is roughly eight ounces. And you add, for this lot, you're gonna need 10 tablespoons of plain water. So whack the flour into a bowl. In with our beef suet, our atora. And then we want to start adding our water. And all you're gonna do with this, literally, is just literally fold it in with a fork. You don't go beating this with a whisk or anything like that. No need to do that. So we'll start off with a couple, three, four, five. So we'll try five first of all. And you'll see that it will start to come together. So just keep whisking. Stirring. Just keep stirring, baby. We've got whisking our hands. Seven. So that's eight. Eight all together. And it looks a bit dry, but it will start to come together. And don't forget, you can always add another tablespoon we've got two more to add, yeah. of water. Yeah, we've got another couple to add in there, yeah. So we'll just whack them in. Right, so the mixing says that should be the right quantity to bring together our dough, basically. Right, so she's gonna get all messy now, folks. In with the hand and just start to knead it and bring it together. 
Again, you don't need to knead this a lot. You just want to combine everything. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. So all, all she'll do then is she'll break them off into little balls yeah. like that. Let's get the lid off our fryer and literally just drop them in. And that's literally all you do, they You ain't got to make them sink or anything. They'll just go straight in there. Literally just ripping off little balls, rolling them, and just literally just dropping them in there. And you expand. will find they will expand. So try and have a little bit of gap around them, folks. Nine, and one more. 10, so there we go. We got 10 out of that, folks. So no need to make them sink. Just put the lid on. And when that lid's on, the steam that's generated there, We'll actually cook the top half of that as well. So there you go, that's them done. There we go folks, 45 minutes later and them dumplings look lovely. Now we are gonna turn them over just to get the older uh, juice running through all of them. I'm sure you can see that uh, they have puffed up absolutely lovely there folks. What a substantial meal this is gonna be, look at that look. It's basically ready to go now. So all we're waiting to do now baby is... Potato potatoes. The potatoes. Potato. Right, so are we going to switch that off now? No, because dumplings have still got to cook. Oh, okay. They take a good hour. Right, so she's just turned them over out. and that cooks the other side of the dumplings apparently, even though I think they're cooked here. Well, I'm the cook and you're not. Oh, stroppy folks, stroppy. No. Get the potatoes on baby, let's get this meal ready. I'll just say they are on. Oh, are they? Oh, that is hot, yeah, of course they are. That's just coming to the boil folks. Right folks, the mash, or should I say the potatoes, have uh, all nicely softened now, we've boiled them up. So we're just gonna turn them off. And I, for you, I'm gonna strain them for you. Put them in the colander and strain them, I baby. I like the way we've boiled them up. You didn't peel them, you didn't cut them. Oh, Janet, put them in a, all he's done is turn them off. Who's gonna be mashing them, Sharon? Well, you've got to do something towards this dinner. I wanna do some new masher we got, folks, look. Let me go and drain these. Is this my magic, folks? I've drained them and they're all in there. Little drop of milk, folks. And for added bit of luxury, yeah, just check it, was that off? Mm -hmm. 1st of October, oh no, that'd be right. Yeah, drop a coffee. cream in it and I like a knob. You are a knob. Of butter. Let me go and get some of that, baby. Right, again, you could probably just mash this on its own and it'll probably be all right. We just like to impart a little more flavour, baby, don't we? A little bit of the cream first. You ain't got to go mad with that. It's just a just a little bit of added flavour, folks. Drop of that. Oh, that's lovely and cold, that milk, Sharon. Well, it should be. It's in the fridge. Of course it is. I'd worry if it was warm. A little splash of that. And a bit of that. There we go. We'll whack a bit of black pepper in there, folks. Make it a good bit. We like to taste it, as I said to you before. And a little bit of our Himalayan pink salt there, folks. Like some of that in. And the rest is a bit of physical body work. So let's just go in there, shall we? Go down there, baby. Let's have a look. This is our brand new masher. I'll tell you what, it's a little bit hard work with this, shall we? It's not got so many bigger holes in it. It's only little holes, isn't it? But we'll persevere, baby. Time to bring this meal together. All right, baby, you get that mash out. We like these little bowls, folks, because obviously with like a stew, you can put it on a plate and it will start to run over, but you've got these high edges on here. So that's the way we like to dish it out. Right, there we go. Look at that, folks, look. Absolutely lovely. We didn't have to add anything else to that. So get your dumplings out first. Oh, look at them, look. She's just gonna ladle out the dumplings, bring the bowl to the thing, that's it, well done, baby. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, look at that. On about a hearty meal, shall we, when you come home from work? I love this. Or on a nice cold, cold winter's day. Hold on, I'll give you a hand, I'll give you a hand. Go on in. Oh, look at that goodness. What a lovely, substantial meal that is, folks. Uh -huh. Go on, baby. Wow. 
course. So that's made one, two, three, four, five substantial meals there, although this one hasn't got the mash with it. But again, you make what you want, the quantities. But that's the beauty of the slow cooker. That's been on doing its thing all day, and we've not had to be there doing anything with it. Well, there it is, folks. Let's take a closer look at it. Well, it'll be rude not to taste it now after that. Uh, well, what we'll makes this dinner? All the hard work we put into it. Well, it's not hard work, really, was it? Of course it is, baby. Right, what are you going in for? My dumpling. I love a dumpling. I love your dumplings too, baby. Go on, what's it like? Nothing. Well? Lovely and fluffy, my dumpling. <laughs> Why, <are> they? <laughs> right. I'm going to have a little go, folks. I'm going to try and get a bit of meat, a bit of everything, and a bit of mash. But I'm going to break like Sharon says, that dumpling, oh, that dumpling falls apart, Sharon. Your dumplings are so soft and fluffy. That's a good mouthful there, folks. Give it a blow, it's very hot. I'm going in. Oh. 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 I'll tell you what, folks. I've had them takeaway meal ones you get, them stews, beef stew and dumplings. It's not a quarter of the plate. It's, it's not a patch on that. The depth of flavour, everything's there. The onions, even the beans, I can taste the beans. The turnip brings something to the party as well, Sharon. Well, I do, because there's no turnip in it. Well, what is it then? Parsnip. Parsnip brings something else to the party, Sharon. <laughs> and I your, like it. You've got your leeks in there. And it's brought you? its friend Carrot and Leek along as well. I'm going in again. I take your options. Now I'm not the problem. Oh. Man, that's on you. Oh, Sharon. That meat, which normally it's a bit tough. As I say, we could have done it in the air fryer, but you wouldn't have had the meat that tender. That's the beauty of doing this casserole in your slow cooker, folks. Now, if it was a chicken casserole, yeah, surely we could have done that in the air fryer, because chicken's tender anyway, isn't it? Straight off the, off the bat sort of thing. I do, I do like a stew in a slow cooker though. I like it all to cook slow and the aroma to get round. I like the idea, everything. Shout, that you put it in there in the morning and then you ain't got to worry yeah. about it, you know? You put everything in the one pot wonder and then it does its stuff and in the evening, all we've had to do really is make up them little dumplings there, which was easy, mm. mash a few potatoes, then turn it off and bring it all together. But or that... you could have even put potatoes in there if you didn't want mash. Yeah, someone mentioned... with the stew. I've done that before with the casserole. Someone also mentioned new potatoes cook very well in the casserole. Uh, yes, in that's the casserole. What I'm going to try the 10 new potatoes in the oh. air fryer one day. Wait for that one, people. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this little recipe. And uh, give it a go. It's a lovely winter warm with this meal. And we can do many more in there. And we'll bring some more of these uh, slow cooker ones to you. Because yet again, cooking in the slow cooker is another way of cutting down on that large well, blinking oven we got over there. There have been people that have asked us to do us something in the slow cooker, so now we have. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We put three videos out a week. Do check them out, as well as an air fryer list and a general cooking list. Uh, we've got a school dinners playlist. We've got a 1940s playlist, I think, Sharon. Got a lot of playlists. And yeah. we've also got a playlist of the vlogs that we do, which we play every Sunday at 8 p.m. in the evening with a live chat box. So if you're at a loose end on a Sunday evening, come and join us 8 p.m. UK time in the live chat box when we play our weekly vlog, just to show you what we've been getting up to during the week, other than cooking. Woo, so we're in one breath, baby. Thanks very much, folks. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Bye. Your dumplings are fantastic, baby. Not the first time I said that.